Okay. Well, it is being recorded. Um, Jason, would you like to go ahead and, and introduce Floor? It would be my honor to. So my name is Jason Strauss. I work at Participate Learning with Ana Maria. It is my humble pleasure to introduce uh, Flor. Uh, she is someone who I've known for the past two years and with our work on um, Conexiones, which is our middle school uh, dual language program for Spanish uh, students. And um, I just absolutely adore uh, Flor. She's been an excellent part of our team and a huge contribution in our, in our live chat meetings. Um, she's, she's been so phenomenal in, in that space. She's originally from Argentina. She works in Union County at Sun Valley Middle. And it's, it's my pleasure to introduce you, Flor. Flor, I can go ahead and stop sharing if you would like to share your screen. Here I go. Yeah, I, I was having a problem with the computer. It was like freeze, you know? Oh, yeah. Perfect <laughs> timing, right? Yeah, perfect time. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jason, so much for your words. Um, well, it's my, I think I'm, I'm not, um, I usually I can't join you uh, for the United We Teach because usually I'm still at school, but I know that I'm part of the United We Teach and I know it's a very uh, nice place where teachers, they share their practices. And I know because I, I have friends from Argentina that they are here today present and they are always sharing what in the United we teach you are sharing and I think it's amazing and I hope I could and I could join you more often you know so today before I go and I present my uh, my session I would like to ask you a question and I would like to to know your thoughts about this uh, and this question is one of David Perkins, that is one of the researchers from Project Zero or Harvard. And the question is, what do you think in today's world is worth learning? Because we are living a special moment, you know, in education, and we are living a special moment uh, with our students in the world. So, Think about what do you think is worth learning in today's world? Well, there we have Patricia that is sharing uh, one of the thoughts, uh, empathy, resilience, what else? Uh, okay, flexibility, flexibility, empathy, curiosity, learning how to learn yes monica there is where we go and what about for example uh we are are we teaching that are we teaching for example uh creativity how to are we teaching our students those values uh responsibility are we teaching are we giving the skills and abilities to successfully navigate the 21st century to our students? Are we teaching our students how to think? For example, do they know how to, how to think, work mind processes are needed? So uh, the real thing is that what we are teaching nowadays, it's an old curriculum from two centuries ago. And I think that we really need to, to start uh, sharing our practices. And I think that together we can improve our practices and try to transform education. And I think that this moment, this Corona moment that we are living, it should be a moment of opportunity to reflect about these practices. Uh, I think that education in some cases is not engaging for our students and that our students are thinking more at school that is something for example that at school it's where they deliver work instead of where they learn and that we as teachers sometimes we are more focused on the completion of assignments that the learning 
that is happening in our classes. So the school needs to change and we are every day at schools and every day we are having the future generations. And I think that we can do this together. And today, so what I'm going to present is what visible thinking is. Visible thinking is uh, an innovative pedagogical approach from Project Zero or Harvard that really redefined really me as a teacher. And I hope that today could redefine really um, you as a teacher. So let me share my screen. Um, okay. Share screen. So, I had the opportunity to present part of this. Okay, present here. Can you see my screen? Yes? Okay. Well, I had the opportunity to present uh, Making Learning Visible to Inspire and Promote Sustainability to one conference that I attend a month ago. Uh, and they are, the conference was Future of Education Conference. And there, there were a lot of people from, that were teachers and educators from different countries and with only one goal. And the goal was to discuss the future of education. And we were realizing that the world has changed and that many, many uh, work, uh, um, many jobs are going to disappear. And we wonder if we really were preparing the students for, for that. And we, we wonder if we were really given the skills, these are skills that uh, are called sometimes the 21st skills that our students need. And what is going on in the world is that uh, many companies would are saying that even they are receiving graduated from, for example, different schools, and maybe they know a lot about that um, area that they have studied, they, they have a lack of other skills, for example, problem solvers, creativity, or many of those uh, abilities that you share in the chat box. And I think that we are forgetting to teach our students those abilities. We are forgetting to develop those abilities in the classrooms. So, through visible thinking, not only we can develop a meaningful learning in our classes, also we can, for example, raise awareness on sustainability and on global issues. So, again, okay. So the question that also we must think about is what it means to be a better thinker today. So how we can have better thinkers in our class. So I wonder, for example, what kind of mind processes are needed to develop a better thinker in our classes? For example, Margaret Mead says that our students need to learn how to think, okay? And she said that children must be taught how to think and not what to think. The real thing is that we are saying to our students, okay, you must think. But do they know what they have to do? We know that we want them to think creatively, critically, and deeply. But I wonder if they know how to do that. And this is a controversial topic that I shared the other day at the, um, at the summit. Okay, I have a problem with quizzes, and this is my problem. And I wonder if it could give the students uh, or it could develop the abilities that we are talking about. Imagine you have two students. Okay, and those students, uh, those two students uh, did the quiz and they did it great, they have a hundred. And the quiz was about, for example, what is gravity and definitions about science, like differences between solutes and solvent. And those students did it great, they have a hundred, but they are, there is one of them that didn't understand the topic and just study by heart. So, some kind of assessment as quizzes, it is like, it is difficult to, to know if the learning is happening in our class. And also there are some mind processes that are maybe uh, we are not developing on them. And for example, visible thinking 
is one of the thinking routines where we say that their thinking becomes visible because they are able to do another mind processes such as analyze, explore, question, compare, they take risks, they observe. And these, they can do it with thinking routines. So what are these thinking routines? So these thinking routines are going, for example, to help us to answer this question. And we, as teacher, we need to think, what do we want the children we teach to be like when they are adults? And to think about this, we need to focus more, like I said in the beginning, more in the learning that is happening in our class and try to create something that we call a culture of thinking in our class. Every teacher has a culture in the class. We have a culture, for example, greeting our students at the door. Uh, we have a culture for uh, time to play, time to complete assignments, we have a culture for our planning, for our lesson plans, how, uh, when are we, for example, receiving parents, but also we need to include some, we need to start developing a culture. Webinar, webinar. So, we need to reflect about this question what is culture? Culture is uh, it's not just a simple activity, it's more than that. It, we go deeper when we talk about culture. We have a culture in our class. So now we need to learn how we can create that culture. So, um, Ana Maria, how much time I have to, to continue with this presentation? because I wanted to share something else also. Yes, I was just thinking at the beginning that I, we forgot to talk about that. So um, until about 6.40, if that's okay with you, 6.40? Yeah, okay. it's okay. Okay, great. Okay, so we need to think about how we can develop together this culture. So there are certain elements, okay, that are present always in our classes. That, for example, Ron Richard from Project Zero or Harvard, it called it the cultural forces. So what I want you to do is, are going to appear these eight cultural forces that are always present in our classes and try to connect an activity or something that you are doing in your class for these eight cultural forces. The first one is time, okay, and time, uh, time do matter in our class. We have time, for example, to deliver our classes, to receive parents. We have time to play with our kids. We have time, for example, to grade assignments, to turn in grades. So time is something that it's really important in our class, how we organize the time. The other important, important cultural force are the routines that we have in our class. And today I'm going to to teach you and to, to share with you what are these thinking routines and how it works, for, ex, for example, in the class. Opportunities, this is very important. What kind of opportunities are we giving to our students? Uh, opportunities, for example, of challenging them, opportunities of creativity, of curiosity. The language, the language that we use when we talk to them, are we using I, we, are we inclusive, okay, when we talk to them? The expectations that we have as teachers, what kind of expectations we have, and also our students' expectations, okay? What, are, what is that first day that the students are coming to our classes, what they think about? So they think about what is going to be like to be in this class, okay? And, and that first week, okay, is when they have the answer for that. What are the school expectations? What are uh, our principal's expectations? The parents' expectations? The interactions. How do we interact with our students? How they interact between them? Modeling. And when we talk about modeling, we are not talking about the instructional modeling. We are talking about 
our modeling. So how we are as teachers, as learners, what are the, how we show, our students are always watching us. So how are we showing, for example, that we are taking risk in our class, that we make mistakes. So that is what is about the modeling that we are showing our students. And the environment that is so important, is so important, for example, how we, how our class look like, it has to be invited for learning. So the posters, the colors that we use, it must invite, it must, um, you know, make an attention. You know, for the first moment that you walk through a class, what kind of learning it is happening there. Okay, so it should be inviting, uh, an inviting learning to learn. So with all these cultural forces, you know that you have like a connection. Okay, you know that uh, you have, you must think about activities you must think about what you are doing with those cultural forces because are always present and we may connect connections with these cultural forces by many other ways so if we go to the theory what are these thinking routines are simple structures it could be powerful questions or a short sequence of steps that can be used alone or in groups and they are designed to be easy to remember for our students. There's a moment that our students, they know and they say, hey, Miss Gita, are we doing the routine? I used to think now I think, are we using I see, I think, I wonder. So they start to be familiarized with the routines and they know what to do. They make their learning visible, okay? They know the steps that they did. They start to think about their thinking. And there is when they reach the metacognition that is our goal, one of our goals. So when the students are using these thinking routines, they are developing another skills that are connected with the 21st, 21st century skills. And these skills, uh, we can call it habits of our mind. Remember in one of the first uh, slides that I shared, we talk about the habit of our mind and this uh, and we wonder what mind processes are needed okay so the students through visible thinking routines they learn how to identify those habits of our mind so we have like 16 habits of our mind okay so uh, through visible thinking they could develop and such, um, I'm going to mention some of them, for example, if you read this slide, you have, for example, that they could learn uh, taking responsible risks, managing impulsivity, okay, questioning and problem posing. So there's a lot of habits of our mind, thinking about your thinking that they could develop with their thinking routines. And So let's, uh, let's now analyze this first thing routine that is option explosion. And it was um, done with students that had only three years old. So the objective of this thing routine was to build up speaking and vocabulary. Uh, so the idea was that students will come up with new ideas and bring solutions to a problem. And let me clarify this. Thinking routines, you can use it in any level starting from kinder up to high school level and then the students are going to learn and apply that knowledge um, for example in, a, in another environment so in this thinking routine the students are going to listen also to their peers and explore different views students will work will work their memory and remember not only their ideas but also their peer ideas so the teacher is going to present a problem and the students will have to think about solutions and try to solve the yeah. problem. So let's see how the teacher is going to uh, do this routine. Today, we are going to do a thinking routine called Option Explosion. And Ms. Terry wants to know if you went to the pool with mommy, like we read it, the story yesterday, what if you got there and the pool did not have any water in it? I will call your name and you answer. 
Isabella, if you got to the pool and there was no water in the pool, what if there was no water in the pool? How could you put water in the pool? Um, I go with my mommy. You go with your mommy and do what? How would you put the water in the pool to fill up the pool? I say with my mommy. Okay. Mia? Mia, how would you put water in the pool? What if this pool had no water in it? You're going to wait till it rains. She's going to wait till it rains. And will the rain maybe fill up the pool with water? Yeah. Okay, Tristan, everyone think. Stop for a minute, Mikey. Think, think, think. Everybody think. We stop, we blink. We think, think, think. I'll come back to you, Isabella, okay? If you're still thinking, okay? Tristan, how would you put water in the pool? What if that pool did not have water in it? Mia's going to wait till it rains. She's going to wait. And Isabella's going to have her mommy help her. You're going to take a what? A balloon. Oh, she's going to take a balloon and do what with it? You're gonna put it in the pool with what? How do you put, how do you get water into the balloon? How would you do that? Oh, in the sink, excellent, Tristan. So you would, tell me how you would do that. You take the balloon and put it on the, and you put water in it from the, from the sink, and then how would you get it in the pool? How would you get that balloon water into the pool? Okay, you would turn it over, roll it in. Well done. How about you poke a hole and then? You could poke a hole. That's another idea. You made a connection. If we poke a hole, all the water's going to come out. Okay, so if you see in this video, okay, the teacher what is doing is uh, writing the, the answer that the students are doing in a poster, okay? And the teacher is more of a facilitator. So the teacher is guiding the thinking of the students and try to make what we call powerful questions. So let's see what are the teacher conclusions of this and what she, she explained what she was trying to do and their results of the thinking routine. So here, I'm going to put it here. Okay. They're speaking in vocabulary. Uh, I wanted them to come up with their own ideas uh, to a problem, come up with a solution, uh, have many different ideas, um, uh, listen to all their different peers and their different views. Uh, and uh, what I wanted was for them to not only come up with one idea, which was how to fill up a pool, but uh, where they could go if they weren't able to swim uh, in the pool. Um, what I love about these thinking routines is I had in mind that the children were going to go back to the table and try to remember what they had told me, which is helping with memory. Uh, but um, after I did it, uh, the owner, Anna Maria Fernandez, said to me, why don't you try uh, asking them what their friends and their peers said and see if they can remember. And I was totally flabbergasted that when I asked each of the children, they not only were able to retain and remember what they had said, for the option explosion, but what their peers had, had done. So I thought it was a wonderful activity, getting the children to retain the memory uh, and, and uh, come up with different ideas other than what. Okay, so what do you think about this thinking routine? Okay, what, I try to see, I don't know what is your, the level that you are teaching, but try to, to connect which activity or which topic can you guide the students for thinking routines? If we continue with this, okay, we have to guide this learning, we have some question that we could ask the students. For example, what makes you say that? Here's the thinking you need to do. Talk to me about what you are doing. I've noticed, in, that is one very clear, and instead of saying something, for example, I like what you are doing, we could say it, I've noticed, and that is going to activate another type of thinking and connection for the question or the comment that you are saying to the student.
So there are, if we go to the classification of the thinking routines, there are a lot of type of routines. We have core thinking routines. We have routines, for example, with art or objects, for the objects and system. And all these resources, you can find it here. There's this website, okay, that is the Project of Zero Harvard uh, uh, website, where you go and you find all the thinking routines. Um, let's suppose, for example, I want to see the core thinking routines. You click here and you have all the type of thinking routines that are core. And let's suppose I want to use this. That is, this is very famous. And if you are starting using thinking routines, this is one of the easiest. So I want to use, I used to think, now I think. So I click there. And here we have this resource link that it comes in English and in Spanish. So let's suppose I want to use the English one. And we have this document. And this document, it, it is telling us what to do. Okay, for example, it tells us the purpose. What kind of thinking does this routine encourage? This routine helps the students reflect on their thinking about the topic or issue and explore how and why that thinking has changed. It can be useful, so it explains in which situation they are um, suggesting you to use this routine. Also, the application, when and where can it uh, can I use it? So this routine can be used whenever students' initial thoughts, opinions, or beliefs are likely to have changed as a result of instruction or experience. For instance, after reading new information, watching a film, listening to a speaker, experiencing something new, having a class discussion at the end of a unit of study, and so on. And here also it gives you another type of guide. What, what sentences can you use to you know, to start this routine. But if we go back to uh, the Harvard, let me, I, I can't take this out now. Let me stop sharing. How can I? Okay, here, I think I was. Okay, so this was the Harvard. So, if we go back to the first page that we were, when we use the link, okay, here. Here we have all the type of routines, but also here I was. There is another way, okay, that we can look for the best routine. If we go here, for example, imagine, I don't know, we are teaching science. We click here in science, and I want a routine related with science, but I don't know, uh, for truth. So if we go down, it's going to highlight and recommend the routines for science that develop that competence or that skill that we want. Uh, so let's suppose that we choose this, that is highlighted again. And again, we have here the resource link that explains uh, how to do it, the purpose and so on. So if I go back to my presentation, I think I will have to, I want to stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay, stop share here. Yeah. So what I'm going to share now. I, okay, here I was. I'm going to share again my screen. Can you see my screen now? No, not yet, Flor. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I don't know. I'm clicking share.
I want me to try again. Okay. Maybe here. Okay, yes. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So, um, if we continue uh, talking about thinking routines and let's think of another levels. Uh, one of the things that with thinking routines we can do is raise awareness, for example, on global issues. So these are examples of work from students that they work with using visible thinking routines. And I remember that the topic was climate change, but I don't want it. Uh, I didn't want my students, for example, to go to a book and look for causes and consequences and strategies about climate change. I want them to um, to discover. I want them to realize about what was going on in the world, and I wanted to them to identify those causes and consequences. So I remember I used a video from uh, National Geographic, one that Leonardo DiCaprio was showing uh, what was going on in, in what was going on in the world was showing evidence. So I did the routine think, puzzle, explore. So in think they they were listing all the thoughts about climate change, all they what were they thoughts about uh, about climate change after the video, and then in puzzle they they started to to do questions what they were wondering about what was going on in the world about climate change. And they were so engaged about, you know, how teenagers, it was in a high, at the high school level, so you know how teenagers are, they were so engaged with the topic, so they start to research more. So the third column was about explore. So in explore, they start to put uh, the, the answers about, about the question that they were having in puzzle, but many of the questions that they have in puzzle didn't have an answer. For example, one of the, que the question was, uh, is there any solution about this? What can we do about this? So they were wondering about solutions. So I said, okay, think about the strategies. Okay, so how can we stop climate change? How can we stop global warming? What strategies do you suggest? And those strategies, it came, it came up to my attention that were the ones that were in the book Okay, so they could think about good strategies. And in many cases, some of the strategies that they share, I don't really know if that, for example, could be a solution in the future. And that, for example, happened to me when I was teaching mining. And I wish, you know, I know more about engineer, but they were saying really cool, cool things about how to stop pollu you know, polluting the environment when you use mining. And I couldn't, I remember, I couldn't answer to that student if that answer was correct. So what happens uh, is that when you start using this thinking routine, students, the, the engagement is going to raise and the content, okay, is still there, but the learning, okay, becomes visible and becomes more important for them because they are so engaged and they want to know more about the topic. And, and remember, we have every day the future generations and every time I wonder if that a student, for example, that we are having in our class that is not raising the hand at the back, I wonder if that a student, for example, could be the one that has the solution for, for a problem that we have in the future. We live in an uncertain world and the coronavirus crisis is a great example, okay? about how unprepared we are, okay? We were not prepared for this. No one was prepared. And um, I think that this world has changed. We live, uh, we are living, for example, we are having new technologies, new ways that we are, we are communicating. We are right now having this virtual conference. We are, for example, right now teaching in a new environment. So the world is uncertain, and that is why we must prepare our students for the future. 
this is another example. Um, this was these students that I was sharing with you were so engaged about this that one of the strategies that they suggest was to do a campaign in in the school community about what was going on, and they decided to to name that campaign "Be the Change, Take Action." It was for me. This was them, and this video they 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 know that I'm sharing that video. And uh, they are so proud of it. And I'm, and I'm saying, I still have, have contact with them. So I'm sharing your video, how you want to, you know, to raise awareness about these environmental global issues. And uh, I wanted to share with you right now, this, they did it, they did it, it wasn't me, okay? So this is their video. Be the change, take action. Be the change, take action. Be the change, take action. Be the change. Take action. Be the change, 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 take action. So uh, imagine when I'm talking about engagement, this is the engagement that you can do using visible thinking routines. And if we continue. Well, you can use visible thinking routines using a lot of uh, apps that in, for example, it could be for virtual learning. Uh, Padlet is a good one. Also, you can use Flipgrid, okay? The discussion boards for uh, visible thinking are very good. And this is a routine very easy to start that is, I see, I think, I wonder. And what I use, for example, is pictures. And I make them think about what they are observing. So in the first column, in, in Beo, in what I see, they need to list what they see in the picture. In the second column, they need to list what they wonder about the picture. And in the third column, the questions uh and no sorry in the third column the questions and in the second column the, their thoughts about the picture so in the end what we want is to create a culture of thinking in the class we want students that are engaged we want uh, an environment where the thinking becomes visible okay and we want to raise awareness and have a meaningful understanding through visible thinking Okay, the conclusions is, uh, are that they are accessible to any age group, any level that you are teaching. It is going to encourage peer collaboration. It's going to develop a growth mindset. It's going to be focused more on learning rather than work and promotes students' interdependence and it's going to teach us understanding rather than knowledge. So what are the new challenges of the 21st century? Okay, I think that working together to develop powerful thinkers and learners. And I think as, and as I said in the beginning, we need, to, this is a moment of opportunity and we need to transform schools into cultures of thinking. And we need to start preparing our students for the future. And she's Montserrat del Pozo, I had the opportunity to to meet her uh, in a thinking conference two years ago. And she said this phrase to me um, that it really had an impact on me. She said that good thinkers do not have thinking skills, but they have something else, motivations, attitudes, values, and mental habits. And I think that we can develop that on our students. And I, I hope that you like what I share. I think that we, we must do something uh, today. And if, if we work together, I think we can make it. Laura, thank you so much for your presentation. I, I don't think you had a chance to look through the comments coming in uh, the chat, but clearly um, your, this topic is of great interest to others. Um, and everybody's commenting on the resources themselves, which are amazing, as well as all of the ideas that you've shared. Are there, if there are any questions for Flor, uh, please feel
feel free to unmute yourselves questions or just general comments. Uh, we definitely have a, have a few minutes for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. I'm reading the comments. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. I have a question for Flor. Yes. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations. I really enjoy what you are sharing with us. And I have a question about discussion boards. Can you help me or help, uh, uh, help us uh, some examples about there? How can I apply discussion boards in order to make learning visible? Uh, for example, um, do you use Canvas? Uh, what pl platform are you using for, for learning? Well, we have our own uh, platform uh, in our school is uh, personalized. Okay, and there in that platform, you have, um, uh, uh, you have, for example, the option for discussion boards there in the platform or? Yes, we have. Okay, so what you could do, for example, uh, in the discussion board, what I do is I embedded the, the routine for example, if it, is, if it is, I used to think, now I think, okay? So imagine you are closing a topic. You just teach, I don't know. You teach, for example, climate change, okay? And you want them to, to have their conclusions and to connect their old thinking with the new thinking that now they have. So you share that and you say, okay, now we are going to do this routine. I used to think, now I think. Okay, when, what I want you is to share three thoughts that you have about your old thinking and three thoughts about your new thinking. Okay. So the students can compare how their thinking has changed, okay, from the beginning when they started the topic and up to the end. What I do is I share and embed the thinking routine or another option if you are doing, for example, I see, I think, I wonder, Okay, you share that you are going to share the thoughts about and you embed the picture. They are in the discussion board. You put the picture, so you say, okay, we are going to now share our thoughts about this picture. So I need you to share three, uh, all or three, or you see, you could say how many you want of them, or also you, you just say, I want you to share what you do you observe in this picture, what do you think and what do you wonder that is happening in the picture? So they start putting there in the discussion board, they start sharing and that is so enriching. Okay, thank you very much for it. Very interesting. Thank you. Anybody else have any, any other questions or comments? Well, thank you so much, Flor, again. Um, it's, been, it's been really amazing to listen to you. I've learned so much. Um, and I will write a little summary of your presentation in our live chat discussion thread for those community members who haven't had a chance to, to be with us today. Thank you, thank you again.